Now, what does a Ferris wheel, a circular saw, and a bicycle wheel have in common? All of these, of course, comprise of matter that rotates about a central axis, where that axis is stationary in some initial frame of reference. When an object undergoes circular motion, the dimensions that we use in rotational kinematics are not the same dimensions that we use in rectilinear kinematics or straight line motion. Now take for example displacement. If the object on the rim of the wheel does one complete rotation, one could argue that the dis total displacement in this case is zero, which means that the average velocity is also zero. So you can see that becomes problematic. As a result, in rotational kinematics, we use different variables and thus different terminologies. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing those variables in kinematics, that is the analysis of motion. And before we start, if this is helpful for you, please consider by buying me a coffee and support the work that I do here on this channel. Let's start. Now, for all intents and purposes, these objects are what we refer to as rigid bodies. As they rotate, they do not deform, distort or twist in any shape or form. This is actually not true in reality. Most objects that rotate have some distortion, but from here on, we'll just simply treat them as rigid bodies. When we want to examine rotational kinematics, we are interested in the dimensions of displacement, velocity and acceleration that occurs in circular motion. So let's take our wheel for example, and we have a wheel here with a certain radius, and we're gonna label this as R. So when an object undergoes circular motion, we measure the placement in terms of the angle that the object moves. And so let's say it moves to this position up here. And so we label this as the angle theta. Now this angle is measured in radians, but before we go on, we need to make sure we understand what a radian is. Now the radian is the angle that is traced out such that the sector that it traces, in other words, this path across here, is actually equal to the radius as well. This is actually also equal to the length of the radius. Now that means this angle is equivalent to one radian. Now since the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r, we can argue that it is 2 pi radians to make one complete revolution. Now since 2 pi is equivalent to 360 degrees, that means one radian is equivalent to 360 divided by 2 pi, which approximately equals 57.3 degrees. Now, like linear displacement, this angular displacement, which we have as theta, also is a vector quantity, so we need a direction. And by convention, what we say is that if it turns in the anti-clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction, we say it's a positive direction, whereas if it's in the clockwise direction, we say it's a negative direction. We can now introduce the relationship between the linear displacement and the angular displacement. So since we have the angular displacement of a complete rotation equaling to 2 pi, and obviously the linear displacement, which happens to be the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi r, you can see now that the linear displacement s is equal to r theta. Now what we're really interested in is the rate of change of displacement. Of course the linear velocity is simply a rectilinear ID, but what we want is an angular velocity. And so what we end up having is the angular velocity where we use the symbol, the Greek letter, the lowercase omega, is therefore equaling to the rate of change of displacement. And so as a result it becomes a derivative of the angular displacement with respect to time. What this means therefore is that all objects on my rigid body, in this case the wheel, have the same angular velocity because this angular displacement of each point is exactly the same. Now of course we have the relationship between the arc length, in other words the linear displacement, and the angular displacement of theta which we know is s is equal to r theta. Well if we have the rate of change of both we therefore have the same comparison. So what that means is, is that the linear velocity at any one time, which of course is going to be the velocity on this particular surface at any moment in time, is simply equal to the radius multiplied by the 
angular velocity. This goes to show that any point on my circle have the same angular velocity at any time. The linear velocity obviously is dependent on the radius. But what if this rotation was speeding up? In other words, the angular velocity increases at a constant rate with respect to time. Well, just like linear velocity changing means we have an acceleration, so too we have an acceleration in rotational motion. And this is of course referred to as the angular acceleration. Now the symbol we use here is the Greek letter alpha. And so what we end up getting is that alpha is equal to the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time. And because the angular velocity is the derivative of the angular displacement with respect to time, that means that the angular acceleration is the second derivative of the angular displacement with respect to time. Now we need to be careful here because the angular acceleration is a different concept to what we refer to as the radial acceleration. Now the radial acceleration in general terms is an acceleration that points in perpendicular to the linear velocity. Now in the special case of circular motion, that radial acceleration is actually referred to as the centripetal acceleration. If the curve is not circular, we just generally use the term radial acceleration and it's responsible for changing the direction of the particle undergoing some sort of motion. So we've already established, of course, that the linear displacement s is equal to r theta and that the linear velocity v is equal to r omega. Clearly, if I divide both by the same time, in other words, the same rate of change, we can get the same relationship between the linear acceleration that is tangential. And so we make that particular point. We say a and then write here t a n to suggest its tangential acceleration I'm interested in is equal to the rate is multiplied by my angular acceleration. Now what we do is we can now talk about the equations of motion in terms of rotational kinematics. Since the relationship between the angular dimension and the linear dimension is simply the constant of the radius, we can simply replace the linear variables with our angular variables. So what we get for the first one is omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. You can see this is like v equals v naught plus a t. For the next one we have of course displacement so we say theta is equal to theta naught the initial value plus omega naught t plus a half alpha t squared. The third equation therefore would be omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 multiplied by alpha, multiplied by theta. Now, of course, these equations assume a constant angular acceleration. Finally, what about that idea of centripetal acceleration? Now, I did a previous video on circular motion, which looked at centripetal acceleration. And we know that the centripetal acceleration, and we write here, of course, I could write, say, it's the radial, that's the general term. Of course, we're dealing with circles, so I can say AC, and therefore this is equal to V squared, over r. Now we already know that v is equal to r omega. So if I want to now refer to the centripetal acceleration, the one that causes the object to undergo circular motion, the one that's actually resulting of the change in direction, what we can do is simply substitute this in and you get omega squared r as the formula for the centripetal acceleration given the angular velocity. Now we'll next turn our attention to the concept of rotational dynamics where we're particularly interested in the concept of force, momentum and energy and work. But before we do that, we need to look at an important concept referred to as the moment of inertia and that will be the next in the series. I hope this has been helpful for you. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and please put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.